morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show on the photography and video topics on YouTube every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Hey, this is a Q&A show, which means that you are watching one of three videos that will start off exactly the same, except that there's going to be a different description of the question here. Or is it there? I forget where I put it. John Schwaller says, I understand the three different shutter types, mechanical, front curtain, and electronic. However, and that's not quite accurate, so we'll come back to that. However, it is not clearly described in the manual when you would choose each other than for silence or faster speed or flash. Also, why and when would you choose auto? And then he goes on to say, in prior models, I believe there was a problem with shutter shock and a range of shutter speeds, so selecting electronic or auto for those speeds would help that. That is correct. I thought the GH5 solved much of that, but okay. So, first off, let's clarify the things. There's not, it's not three different types of shutter. There's two different types of shutter. There's mechanical shutter, and there's electronic shutter. Auto chooses automatically whether it's going to use mechanical or electronic. The other part of what he said was front curtain, that is still mechanical. So there's front curtain and rear curtain in mechanical, but that's not different types of shutter, that's just different timing on the shutter. So let's start with that. Okay, so mechanical shutter, the is a mechanical shutter, <laughs> leaves that open and close, physically open and close. It's a it's it's a door or a window blind or however you want to whatever analogy you want to use that opens to let light in and then closes to stop the light from coming in. On a front curtain shutter, what that means is, let's say it's easiest if you imagine this on a long exposure. Let's say you've got a one second long exposure. So on a front curtain shutter, hold on a second, let me get this right. Um, should we do open, close? Wait, hold on a second. Oh man, I had this all in my head and now I went and got it all screwed up and backwards. Um, okay. I said open and close. Did I say open and close at the beginning and the end? Forget that part. If I said that, forget that part. I'm clearly delusional this morning. It's about when the flash fires. Whew. It's when the flash fires. Okay, so let's say you have a one second long exposure. Your shutter opens, the flash has to fire, then the shutter closes. Front curtain means the shutter opens, the flash fires immediately. And then the shutter stays open for the rest of that one second or whatever it is, and then the shutter closes. Rear curtain means that the shutter opens, the flash doesn't fire, the shutter's open for as long as it's going to be open, say a second, and then just before the shutter closes, the flash fires, and then the shutter closes. So shutter open, flash fire, stays open, closes, or shutter open, stays open, flash fire, closes. That's front curtain, rear curtain shutter. So why would you use the difference, or what's the, what's the purpose? Generally, by default, the camera's set to front curtain. That's just your normal standard. That's what cameras usually do is front curtain. So flash, uh, the shutter opens, flash fires, stays open as long as it needs, and it closes again. The only reason that it really you really need to go to rear curtain is if you're doing a, a long exposure with a motion effect, a movement effect, and you want to freeze motion at the end of the exposure. And you think, okay, why would you want to do that? So imagine this. Imagine you're in a scenario where you've got some ambient light, enough to put an exposure onto the, uh, to expose the image. So you've got someone running and it's kind of a dark room, but you got a little bit of light in there. And if you had a one second long exposure, forget about the flash, one second long exposure, and you photographed it while they're running, you would see them. You'd, they'd be blurry, they'd be smeary, but you would see them. Now you fire the flash. If you fire, when you fire the flash, you're exposing the image completely and you are freezing that person, that subject, that car, that running dog, whatever it is, you're freezing them. Okay, so when the shutter's open for that full second, you've got that long smeary look of them running. And when the flash fires, you have them frozen. If you had front curtain shutter, which is the default, when the flash, when the shutter opens, the flash fires, they're frozen, but now you see them running. So you have this trail in front of them and your brain goes, wait, what? That's not right. That's not what we expect to see. We want to see the trail behind them. So that's where rear curtain shutter comes in. So you open the shutter, you get the smeary person running through the scene, and then at the last moment, the flash fires, freezes the person, paints them onto the scene, if you want to look at it that way, and then the shutter closes. So you have a picture of a person, and then this smeary trail behind them, or the car frozen in the smeary trail behind them, or the person jumping in the air, and the smeary trail as they leaped up, and then you fired the flash at the end when they're in the air. So that's what rear curtain shutter sync, rear curtain sync does. It fires the flash at the end of the exposure instead of at the beginning. If you did it the other way around, you'd have that frozen image of the person and then the smear in front of them as they ran and it would look really weird. So that's what that's for. Okay, so that's that part of it. And now the second part of the question is about electronic. So electronic shutter is where with mechanical, the shutter opens to expose and then closes to stop exposure. On a mirrorless camera, um, which I guess would be the only place you'd have these, wouldn't it? Yeah, you can't have an electronic shutter on a mechanical, can you? 
And a mirror camera? I guess actually you probably could. Yeah, I suppose you can. All right, of course you can, because that's how video is recorded on standard DSLRs. Okay, all right, so you can have electronic or mechanical on any type of camera. Sorry, I had to think through that. I haven't shot mirrored cameras in years. Um, the difference on a, a me mechanical versus electronic is on a mechanical shutter, the shutter is, let's say on a mirrored camera, the shutter is probably always basically recording, um, I guess. I don't know, maybe it turns on or off, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this, the shutter is, uh, the the sensor is recording, the shutter opens to let light in and closes to stop light coming in, just like film, right? Same thing as film. So the film is basically always recording, that's why you have to keep it in the dark, right? Shutter opens, exposes, and closes. With electronic shutter, the shutter basically, it, the um, sensor basically turns on recording and then turns it off again. So instead of having a shutter that opens and closes, there is no shutter or the shutter just stays open and the sensor simply records, starts recording and stops recording. Now, the, there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages to both, which is why you have both options. One of the advantages of electronic shutter is you can have much faster shutter speeds. You can turn on and off that recording in a much smaller fraction of time than you can physically open and close a shutter. Most shutter, most cameras max out at one eight thousandths of a second shutter speed where, uh, for mechanical shutter, whereas for electronic shutter, let's actually see, go into manual here and crank this up. I don't even know what it, the max is on here. On this camera you get, on the GH5, you get one sixteen thousandth of a second. Okay, so that's fast. Um, a mechanical shutter can't physically move that fast. So you've got a maximum shutter speed of one sixteen thousandths when you're in electronic, one eight thousandths when you're in uh, mechanical. I'm pretty sure it's, I'm pretty sure it's an eight thousandths on this camera. Let's pretend that it is. The disadvantage of electronic, there's a couple of them. One of the main disadvantages of electronic is you cannot fire a flash while doing electronic shutter. You go, okay, why not? Well, the reason that you can't leads into the second problem with it, and that is because the entire sh uh, sensor is not exposed at one time. It is written in lines, one line after another, it is written. Obviously very, very fast, but the data is recorded one line at a time, which is why you'll see things referred to as rolling shutter. When you have, um, when you're in video mode or in electronic shutter mode, and if you're panning, let's say you're, the easiest way to, to recreate this is to get in the car, and you can do this with your iPhone or your smartphone because they have electronic shutters. Get in your car, don't be driving while you're doing this, have somebody else drive, driving down the road, drive past a lamp post or a tree, something you know is vertical, and take a picture as you go past it, and in the picture, it'll look like this because it recorded, the object is moving through the scene, and it recorded here, and then it came back to record, but now it's moved forward. And it came back again to record, but now it's moved forward. It came back again. And so you end up with this diagonal version of whatever it was. This only happens when you have fast moving subjects. Or if you were to take your camera in video mode and do this, you get a very jello effect on some cameras. The GH5 is actually tremendously good at this. It really, really minimized the jello effect. You compare it to a lot of other cameras and you'll see much more jello effects. So it is one of the nice advantages of this guy. But, um, but that is one of the disadvantages of it. So you can't fire a flash in electronic shutter mode and you get the jello effect in fast motion. On the mechanical shutter mode, you can fire a flash and you don't have the jello effect. Okay, so why would you not always use mechanical? Well, because you get the faster shutter speed on electronic and it's silent. Silent is a really, really big one. Having, if you're shooting something like a wedding, if you put the camera into electronic shutter mode, it is perfectly silent, which is kind of cool when you're shooting any kind of sensitive subject environment. So there's that. Um, let's see here. There is a, there will be in the future, and I think this exists on some very specialized cameras today, but there will be in the future something called a global shutter. And a global shutter is electronic shutter, but where the entire shutter is recorded at once. So it basically turns on the entire sensor and turns off. I said shutter, I meant sensor. Turns on the entire sensor at once and then turns it off again. That will allow you to eliminate the jello effect and allow you to fire a flash to expose it. Now, this is future tech, it is coming. Uh, it's just universal, it's not like it's a Lumix thing. It's just, it's just kind of one of those big industry, this is happening. I don't know why it hasn't happened yet. I don't know if it's a cost issue or resolution issue. I, I don't know anything about it. I just know that that is the next evolution, next step of electronic shutters, and that will happen eventually, once the tech is caught up to what people need and want out of it, and I suppose are willing to pay. Uh, so that is that is coming, and eventually, so eventually the whole mechanical shutter thing will probably go away. I would imagine it will just go away entirely uh, once, once global shutter is truly 
universal and, and normal. So, uh, so there's that. So hopefully that answered that question. Oh, there was one more about the shutter shock and auto. So auto automatically switches between mechanical and electronic shutter. There's this term called shutter shock where at certain frame, uh, certain shutter speeds, as the shutter opens and closes, it can create a, a shock that will be seen in the image, a little vibration in the image. It's, it's one of these things that, I gotta be honest with you, I have, I've been shooting for kind of a long time. I have never ever seen this in one of my images. I've never had a problem with it. But it is one of those things that pixel peepers and um, those who prefer to spend their times in forums more than shooting, and I know I'm probably insulting some people here, sorry, but uh, it's one of those things that people will look at and try to find and find it and go, look, I see shutter shock. This camera sucks. There's shutter shock. It can happen. Um, like I said, I have never, ever had a problem with it in any of my pictures. But it happens at a specific shutter speed, and I... It's around 1 1 25th of a second, I think. And I, I honestly, I don't know why. I don't understand why it's at that shutter speed, not others beyond my scope. But this camera, as well as many other Lumix cameras, and I'm sure many other cameras on the market out there, um, it's a mirrorless thing. This is a mirrorless issue. Will automatically switch to electronic shutter when you're in that range where shutter shock becomes a problem. Unless you have a flash on there and then it knows you have to be mechanical shutter, so it's not gonna switch. So that's, that's the idea. Again. It's a, if you just Google shutter shock, you'll read all kinds of stuff about it. You'll find all kinds of forums, people ranting and raving about it. Um, never, ever been an actual problem for any of my work, but, um, but it does exist. It's, it's a real thing. And this camera, that's how this and many other cameras get around it, is by switching to electronic shutter when it's in that very narrow range of, um, of shutter speed. So that, I believe, answers all of his questions. Let me take a quick look at the comments here, if there's anything that's relevant to this question. And if not, we will move on to the next one. Uh, Fake Cube is saying, I know there's some global shutters out there on really high-end stuff, but I believe it causes serious drop in dynamic range. Oh, okay, interesting. Like I said, I, just, I don't know enough about it, but um, but yeah, that's it's. I know that it's coming, it's getting better and better, so we will start to see that everywhere. Uh, Fake Cube also says, often what people think is shutter shock isn't actually shutter shock, it's other problems with their technique. Oh, there you go, there's always that. Okay, nothing else that is relevant to this, so that wraps up that question. <laughs>